Well, it's about jolly well time, yo. <laughs> Today's adventure, kids, is right here. Let's see what it is. Ah, got to be a Yamaha. I'm standing in the light. Yeah, it's a Yamaha. Yamaha Hoppy. It's a good guitar, too. I've already uh, sort of checked it out. Uh, we're going to inspect it in depth and uh, show you things to look for maybe when you're buying a guitar. And we're going to do a setup on this guitar, a complete setup. Chain strings and the whole thing. It's uh, going to get uh, the action lowered on it. The action is really high right now. I'll show it to you. Let me get it on the bench and we'll talk about it. Acoustic guitar. I did some homework and I found out it's an FD-01S model. Uh, it looks like it might be an old guitar too. Uh, maybe it's just, it looks like it's got some age on it. I don't know yet, but going to check him out and see uh, if there's anything that needs done to it and do it and set it up and I'll show you a few things to uh, look for if you're on the market if you're thinking about buying an acoustic guitar I'll show you some things to uh, watch out for and look for during your journey so let me get the camera in the pod and uh, drink of water <laughs> and we'll get one thing here first to look for uh, if you're on the market for an acoustic guitar and checking them out check the uh, one of the things you want to check is make sure the bridge is glued onto that guitar properly make sure it's still glued you know what I mean and one way I do that is just take a sheet of paper and lay it on the top try to stick that paper underneath the bridge And go all the way up. There you go. Go all the way around with it. She's popped up a little bit right there, or maybe wasn't glued there at the factory. You know, it's hard to say. You should do this with string tension on. You want it under string tension. But yeah, that one does have a, a little bit of a, uh, a pull up on it. That's nothing to worry about, though. I mean, that's. It's just on that one corner. You can check the front if you want. I usually don't because, you know, most of the time if it's going to pull loose, it's going to do it on the back because all the tension is pulling it forward. Uh, this one is pretty good everywhere else. So I would not even worry about that. That's not worth cutting that entire bridge off and sanding and roughing it up and redoing it and gluing it and clamping it it's not worth it. it that could have been like that at the factory and you know it's not gotten any worse but we know it and we should uh, keep an eye on that anyways that's one thing you want to look for when uh, checking out guitars when you think you're going to buy one and uh, there's one way to check it so hold on let me get this camera set up here and we'll get into this thing so a basic setup job uh, new strings, uh, frets, whatever this guitar needs, we're going to do to it. So, uh, I'm not going to film me taking the strings off and bore you with all that. Oh, i got to get the strings off of it. I don't need to take any measurements here because we don't need to duplicate this action. Uh, it's almost unplayable. It's so high. And we really are hoping that the truss rod works. Uh, we're in trouble if it doesn't. But it probably will, you know. Now and then I get one that the truss rod is uh, doesn't work anymore. So, you know, hopefully that's not the case with this one. Anyways, I'm going to take the strings off and uh, show you how I set up acoustic guitars again. Well, the truss rod does work. I checked it. And I checked for uh, loose braces. And uh, by the way... I should have filmed that, but you can, uh, one way to check for loose, loose braces, it's not a foolproof way, but you can tap on the top. A lot of times, if you have a loose brace, you can hear that. It'll, it'll like rattle or vibrate, or you might feel it, feel it in the top. This guitar is getting solid. 
Someone has uh, done some work on it. It's got a new nut, and it's got a new saddle, and all the bridge pins are new. I wonder if that bridge pins are not, they're plastic. I'm wondering what the saddle is, if it's plastic or... It's plastic, yeah. The old drop test. It is plastic, though. Oh, wow, there's a... Uh, ah, huh. <laughs> There's shims in there. I don't know why they would shim it up as high as the action was on it. Two shims. No clue why they would do that. With that action that high. Shim City. Maybe the action was too low at one time. I don't know. The frets look good. The frets are barely worn at all, man. Only one of them. Uh, the, the rest of them look fine. Well, they all look fine. The one that's got the wear on it is very little bit. So, we don't need to do anything to the frets. Um, we are going to have to take off of this saddle, though. Uh, quite a lot, I think. Um, the bridge pins are plastic. I've already checked those. Another thing you might want to look at, if you're looking at an instrument, by the way, is the binding around the body. You know, look for any cracks or places the glue has came loose. Look at the heel of the neck right here and make sure it's not cracked or any separation or even if there's a crack in the finish, then something has moved. You know, look up through here. Uh, just, you know, make sure you you don't see any cracks or glue glue joints kind of loose. Check the back of it out. Make sure, you know, the binding around the back also, as well as the top. Uh, look along the, feel along the fretboard for any sharp frets sticking out. Check the keys. Make sure they all work and they're tight. I've got to do that yet. Uh, there's bushings in there wear out sometimes and cause some problems. So, you know, if you got the strings off of it, you can check those by just feeling how much plays in the the peg. So, what to do? First thing I want to do is get a straight edge and lay it on here and make sure this bridge is uh, not... I'll make sure it lines up with it's flat with with the board. Uh, man, I don't have a straight edge. I, uh, hold on. So with a straight edge, what you want to do is make sure the neck is absolutely straight, flat, level, and it is. Slide that straight edge right back to the bridge, and you should be level with it, with the bridge itself. I would recommend checking both sides of the neck, uh, you know, and the center. It's kind of hard for me to do with one hand, but anyways... You want that to be, uh, you know, if it's if that if that hits that bridge and doesn't slide and won't slide up on top of it, you're probably due for a, a neck reset or a bridge shave, which I <laughs> not get into. Anyways, uh, you know, if you're buying an acoustic guitar, that's something. If you can tear it down, you can do this with the strings on it too. Uh, that might be one thing you want to check. This guitar is in good shape. Let me get uh, my hands free here. So we've uh, checked the braces, checked the bridge, make sure it's glued on properly, check the binding, the glue joints, inside, outside. Um, we have to uh, put strings on it now. Well, that's a good tight fit. we got to put strings on it. It's going to get Darko. Um, you can see them, 0.012 to 0.054. The only other thing I have is 0.013 to 0.056, and I think that might be maybe just a little bit too heavy for this guitar. So these these will be fine on this. So, here again, I'm not going to bore you to death putting strings on, uh, unless you want to learn how to put on strings let me know and I'll do a video on that. So hold on, let me get these strings on. I'll come back and uh, show you what we got to do to get the action right. By the way, 
I've got the first string in here at the bridge. Uh, I've been asked this a few times, so I'll just explain. I, I pull, I, I'm putting the first string on, okay? I pull that string up to the second string peg and bend it. And then stick it in the first string up to the bend. And that gives you a very nice uh, amount of winding that won't slip and it's uh, it, you know it's easy to change it makes life a lot easier I learned that off a of day thanks day well we're screwed <laughs> not good news I got strings on it they're all loose now but uh, I, I put a little bit of a back bow backward bow well quite a bit of one in the neck put the strings on tuned it up to pitch and looked at it and it had a, a really bad forward bow in it. Uh, the truss rod, I don't know, it seems to be working, but it seems to be weak. I don't know what's up with that. Anyways, uh, where we are now, I've got it pretty tight. I've got a backward bow in it, which uh, comes out and turns into a forward bow when you tune it up. So I don't want to go too much at a time with that neck too fast you know what I mean so uh, I'm gonna leave this until tomorrow and come back leave the strings loose leave the truss rod tight and keep that backward bow this way pressure on that neck so you know let it get used to that position and then come back maybe tomorrow and tighten it a little bit more like I say you can uh, really screw up tightening those up too tight don't want to do that so I'm going to let the neck uh, settle overnight and tomorrow and uh, maybe tomorrow night. And maybe even longer than that. I might leave it two days. I'm going to have to go slow with this neck. But uh, I don't know. The truss rod, it's, it's weird because it works. It just seems like it's really weak for some reason. I don't know what's up with that. Um, maybe it is weak. But, it, you know, it's working. So that's where we stand now. So... Um, I guess come back in 24 hours or so and uh, see if uh, the thing will take any more. Put a little bit more backward bow in the neck. Got to go slow, folks. Cheers. Finally, some success. <laughs> oh, man. It's been 48 hours. I left it for two days and... Uh, Went about another quarter of a turn on it. Man, that, that truss rod is tight, baby. But it's it's working. It seems to be working okay. So, you know, it's just really, really, really tight. Um, I'm going to show you how to set the neck relief again. You're going to put a capo on the first fret. I'm going to make sure we have the right relief in it now that we got it. It was bowed backwards big time with the tension off of the string. So you want to put a capo on the first fret. Note the 15th fret. And I have a feeler's gauge here. I like to see about 10 thousandths of uh, relief in that neck. You want to check about the seventh. I check I like to check the seventh, eighth, and ninth frets, and that thing should just go in there. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, it looks like maybe it's getting it. Seventh fret, eighth fret, and ninth. It's a little tight on the ninth, but it slips right in the seventh and eighth, so it's perfect. And that was just by coincidence because, like I say, it had a, a hellacious backward bow in it with the tension off the strings. That happens a lot. I've just never seen one with that much and have to tighten that truss rod that tight to get the right neck relief when it's tuned up to pitch. Um, make mention again, the old timers used to say, note to first fret and, you know, the 17th or whatever, and play a note. 
and if you can play a note, your your neck relief is set right. I don't agree with that, but uh, I guess it's one way to tell if you if you have relief, which the you know I don't know, man. People come up with all kinds of shit like that. Seems like. Now we're going to check the action. I'm going to have to take this saddle back out and sand it. I know I am. Uh, I like to go by Martin specs on the action. If you know on most guitars, and that seems to be good with most guitars and most people. Um, the bass side, Martin recommends on the bass side, a minimum of three thirty seconds and a maximum of seven sixty four. I believe. Yeah, I'm sure it is because I I go with. Uh, 564 some of my guitars on the on the treble side they recommend a sixteenth of an inch minimum and 564 a maximum on the treble string at the 12th fret so I'm going to take the saddle out and sand from the bottom of it and we need to bring this down I don't know what it is right now but I do know it's high uh, let me just check it real quick here God, it's bad when you get old and you can't see anymore. It's setting right now at 964 on the bass side. And 764 on the treble side. And that's way high. We'd like to see 564 or 664 in that area. Even 764 would be, uh, you know, within Martin Specs. So there's a difference of 364 in where the action is now and where we want it to be at 664. So, 364 is the difference. That's uh, 0.0469 thousandths of an inch. So, let's round it up to uh, 0.0470. We need to take twice that amount back here from the saddle, which is um, 94, uh, 94 thousandths of an inch is what we need to take off of this saddle. I don't know all these numbers in my head. I have a, a little chart here on my measuring tool that I'm looking at. Conver conversion chart. So, 94 thousandths is what we need to take. We need to mark that and take 94 thousandths off the bottom of that saddle to get this action down to 664. So, I'm going to loosen the strings, pull the saddle out, and sand it. So, uh, hang on. 94 thousandths, that's quite a lot we got to take off of this saddle. I'll show you how I did that. I set my uh, micrometer for 94 thousandths, which is a, you see it sticking out, that's 94 thousandths sticking out there. <laughs> And, um, yeah, let me get turned around. Okay. The top line on that saddle is where I draw it. In. That's how far it sets down in the slot, on the bridge slot. The bottom line you see on both sides of the bottom of the saddle is 94 thousandths of an inch from the bottom. I have to sand off up to the, that bottom line, those bottom two lines. That will put your action at uh, 664 on the base side. So that's what we're shooting for. I just wanted to show you that because uh, without it, you know, you, you need to measure it. And this is the way, the quickest way that I can think of right now to do it. So anyways, sanding comes in next. I'm going to take uh, off of the bottom of it right here up to those first two lines. That's quite a lot, but that's what the numbers say. Hold on. We're 
We're there, baby. We are there. We're there. I've been working on this for a while. I didn't film all of it, but uh, this is a way, one way to do that. Just sand it down to your mark. What I usually do is go up in the other shop and put this saddle in a vise. And I let the amount that I want to take off stick above the top of the uh, vise. And then take a belt sander and just bam, you're done. Just, you know, it just takes a minute, man, to knock that down. This is a slower way, but and the reason I didn't do that tonight, I have a video, uh, I don't know how many, but one I remember, <laughs> of me doing that. I think it's the one about putting in, installing bridge saddles. I can't, I'm not sure, but. So let's see what we got. Tune him up. So the saddle's in. Um, it's, it's tuned up to pitch. Now I haven't even looked at the action yet. Um, we need to check the neck relief again. I can't stress that. You have to check your neck relief many times. Many, many, many times. <laughs> Because it changes all the time, you know. Me listening to strings and tightening back up, you know, I just want to assure that it went back to where it was before. So, this is ten thousandths, as I said before. It should go under the seventh, eighth, and ninth fret area without shoving that string up. If you can get on uh, any one of those without shoving the string up, then you're good to go. We're good here. That's what we like to see. So that's ten thousandths neck relief set. It stayed the same. And we want to check the string height. The action at the 12th fret in playing position, not lying down on its back. We want it to count when it counts. You know what I mean? Four, five, six, sixty-fours for three thirty seconds. That's exactly what we wanted. And four sixty-fours. Six sixty-fours and four sixty-fours. Now that's a new saddle. I don't know who put the nut and saddle and pins in. They were in there when it came here. And I don't know if they put a saddle in to match the arch of that fingerboard. It's got... I didn't check it. Maybe I should. Just to see what it is and see if they match up. In fact, I will do that. Hold on. Let me get the tools. The shit you need to check the arch in your fingerboard, baby. And I've already determined it's a 12. It's 12 radius. Uh, this you can check with the strings on, by the way. And uh, I've got a million of the things. And these you check uh, underneath the strings. Well, that looks good. This is also a 12. And the string arch is a 12. Some, whoever put the saddle in, I don't know if they just got lucky and got the right arch on that saddle, or uh, knew what they were doing and bought a saddle with an, a number 12 inch arch in it. But uh, anyway, here's what these things, what they look like. These are for with the strings off, and these are with the strings on. And then, of course, I have a lot of these, too, to match every one of these. So anyways, you need all that stuff if you're going to do it right, set it up right. So it's a 12, 12-inch uh, 12 arch, and the saddle matches that, so that's good. That, that means we can, we could lower the action some more if we wanted to. But I don't think we're going to have any buzzing problems or anything. 
Um, that was a brand new saddle. It hadn't ever been sanded on the bottom. It was still, you could tell, you know, by the marks on the bottom of it, it was, had never been sanded. It was just bought and put in there like that. But anyway, it's the right height now. It's really down there. It's low, but the guitar is very dry. I'm going to humidify it a little bit before I send it back. We have some fall away here. It's got a hump right here where the neck meets the body and it falls away a little bit down in here. You're probably not going to be playing it down in there anyway, but um, I just hate to see that. But Sometimes humidification will fix that. Um, well, it actually looks good. stretched it out of tune. Uh, so let's see what's next. Trying to keep my head in gear here. Uh, what did we do? We inspected the entire guitar. Checked the braces. Checked the bridge. It has a loose place on the bottom here. Back corner. It's not bad. It's probably been that way from the factory. Wouldn't even worry about it. Uh, we checked all the keys, they're all tight, the bushings are all good. Checked uh, glue joints all around the outside and inside of the body, the binding. Uh, cleaned the fingerboard, polished it and oiled it. Um, what else did we do? Set the neck relief. Lowered the action. Uh, I think that's about it. And I'm going to buff it out for the guy too. It belongs to a YouTube user. Well, I forgot to show you how this tuner worked the last time. So for all you Android users, this app is called The Tuner. D-A-T-U-N-E-R Lite. It's a very nice app. And here's how it works. So you can see it's uh, it's easy to see for one thing. Well, depending on the size of your phone, uh, I I use a Peterson tuner usually, uh, especially when I'm setting intonation. But this I've checked it against the Peterson. And it's very accurate, and it's free. It's called the Tuner Light.
loud and it's got a good sound to it. It's a nice little guitar. Yamaha, I've always been impressed by most of their instruments. Not all of them, but most of them. Yeah, are, are, they sound very good. Anyways, uh, this guitar is ready for the road. I, well, I'm going to keep it a couple of days and watch that neck because I really had to tighten that truss rod up, man, it, uh, way tighter than I should have had to have went. And uh, like I say, I'd get a a huge backward bow in the neck, and when I put string tension on it, bring it up to pitch, it had a forward bow in it, and the, the truss rod was tight. So we let it set a couple of days, tightened up with the string tension off to get that neck used to being in that, that bow backward position so much. And then tighten it a little bit more, put string tension back on it, and, uh, and luckily the neck relief was perfect. It was 10,000, so man, that was so cool that worked out that way because I didn't really want to screw with that anymore. You know, it shouldn't have it. It shouldn't be that tight. The truss rod in this guitar works, like I say, but it seems to be very weak for some reason. But it's holding up. I want to keep it a couple of days and watch the neck and just uh, watch the action, measure the relief again, measure the action, make sure you know nothing moves. Uh, I wouldn't recommend putting any heavier strings on this instrument. It's kind of a lightweight guitar. And you know, I just I wouldn't do it. It probably would hold them for a while anyway, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. But anyways, got it polished up. I've already got fingerprints all over it now, but I don't know if you can see that or not. Man, it really cleaned up nice. Buffed out really well. Anyways, uh there's that side of it. Yamaha. -y. Good guitar, man. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, thank you to my thanks to my new subscribers and my old ones. Man, you guys are rocking the boat, baby. I'm telling you, lots of stuff to come on this channel. So hang around, don't leave. Uh, it's going to be a lot of good guitar lessons coming up. The next video will be a guitar lesson on on uh, flat picking. So it might not be on flat picking. So say so hang around. Um, I play finger style too, so I uh, might even get into some of that. I don't know. But thank you guys for watching every and gals, every single one of you. I appreciate your support. Uh, like I say, uh, guitar lesson will be the next video. More guitar repair or instrument repairs to come. I've got several instruments piling up on me right now. I've been working on them. I just haven't been filming them. been kind of sick with a cold and... Uh, congestion and <clears throat> dealing with all that crap still am but anyways uh hang around there's going to be more guitar lessons coming up and more repair lessons on uh, not necessarily guitars uh my friend q ball she's not here with me right now she's done went to bed i think but uh anyways hang around lots of laughter to come lots of fun and uh just all kind of crazy shit baby all kinds of crazy shit so until then, I'm going to say cheers to you. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.